Um, so for the next slide, it's just a quick disclaimer. Um, this is not uh, legal advice. Um, we don't have um, an attorney-client relationship. Um, so anything you hear today, it's just uh, personally and, and uh, nothing you should uh, rely on uh, for your uh, legal needs. Um, if you can move on to slide number three. There we go. Uh, so quick overview um, today, just want to talk about um, the different types of ID, why it's important, um, you know, kind of where you are at, uh, from what I've heard, you're very early stage companies for the most part. Um, and so why, you know, thinking about IP at this very early stage is important. We'll get into the different types of intellectual property, uh, patents, trade secrets, copyrights, trademarks, um, some guide, some guidelines, some best practices, um, things to avoid when you're filing for IP, and um, just some of uh, also some things to think about when working with university tech transfer offices. As a lot of early stage companies end up licensing intellectual property from hospitals, universities, research institutes, and the like. Um, so we can move on to the next slide. So where, where are you today um, as an early stage company? Um, you know, many of you have started your company or thinking about starting a company. Um, maybe you're in discussions with the tech transfer office to license out some foundational IP. Um, maybe that will be your next step. You know, if you've received an NIH grant, that's great. You have some money to get, get going. Uh, maybe your next step is to try to raise even more money so you can uh, develop technology. Um, so where you're at, it's, you know, the getting a foundational intellectual property base is super important early on, um, whether that's licensing it from a university, whether that's filing it yourself, or um, whether you are, you know, just wherever you're at, make sure you have a foundation, because if you don't worry about it and let it go, give up, go out and get presentations, publish papers, you may be at risk of, of losing the ability to have uh, an intellectual property base. And then your ability to really uh, have a, a company of any value kind of goes out the window. Um, so the next slide, uh, we'll get into the various types of intellectual property. So, you know, first and foremost, most people think of patents when you think of IP um, and they are generally the most valuable form of intellectual property. Um, so, you know, the requirement for a patent is that your idea is both novel and non-obvious. And if that's the case, you can file for a patent and get it allowed. You'll have 20 years of patent life from when you file. And that, you know, give an exclusive monopoly to stop other people from making, using, selling, your whatever it is that you have a patent on. Um, patents are, you know, primarily it for some, you know, good for things that, that other people can reverse engineer, or you have to tell the world about it, how it works, regulatory reasons, drugs, for instance, you have to give a lot of information um, to get your, your product allowed. So a patent, you know, because it's out there in the public, having a patent on it can is what you'll probably need to uh, have, you know, have that monopoly to recoup that investment that you're making in this company. Um, you know, key features, no prior publications or public disclosures, it will destroy your patent rights. So, you know, NDAs are, if you're going to talk to someone, uh, but even so, you know, um, keep it, keep it to yourself until you've got it, got it filed uh, for patent. Um, so, you know, obviously patents are the best kind of IP for most, in most cases for a company, but the cons are they can be expensive, especially when you're filing international protection. Um, you know, you're probably going to pay five to $20,000 to file a, a, for a patent and then upwards of $80,000 or more when you have to file that in enough major international jurisdictions to have uh, broad international protection. Um, related to patents in that it, it can cover similar things are trade secrets. Uh, they're really good for things that can't be reverse engineered. You know, everybody knows about the secret formula for Coke or the recipe for Kentucky Fried Chicken, you know, very famous trade secrets. Things that you can keep a secret um, are, are very uh, 
good topics for, for this. Um, the benefits, it can last forever. As long as you can keep it secret, you, it, 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 can, it can be a way to protect your, your intellectual property. It costs nothing. There's no registration. Um, you just have to be able to keep it secret. Um, generally, uh, things that, that, are gr that are good ideas are algorithms, software, source code, things that you don't share with the public, things that you keep in-house and uh, you kind of run in the background. Um, cons are, you know, if, if, if you do let it out, then it's gone forever and you can't put the genie back in the bottle. Uh, next slide, uh, we can move on to uh, um, trademarks and copyrights. Uh, so trademarks pr protect uh, the source identification, right? The, the company that's providing the goods, that's the company that's selling the goods, right? If you, you know, buy a can of Coca-Cola, you know what it's going to taste like, you know the quality. It's, you know, it's, it, so it, it really, it's a, you know, it's, it's a good form of protection for a, a pr tangible product. Uh, it can last forever as long as you're selling that product and enforcing your trademark. Uh, there's no expiration date. And you can file internationally once you fill in the U.S. Um, those costs can add up quickly if you do a file internationally. Um, but and generally, for an early stage company, unless you plan to be the company that actually takes your product to market and sells it, I wouldn't recommend investing in trademarks because if your exit plan for your company is to sell your company, uh, license out your technology, whoever buys it or licenses it's probably going to brand it themselves and use their own trademarks so money you spend on uh trademarking is probably just lost and finally uh, the last kind of intellectual property that's commonly discussed is copyright copyright uh, protects the expression of ideas not the ideas themselves um, so it's how you uh, convey your idea it's um really good for software apps right uh, software code can be copyrighted the code for your app and training te and delivering teaching like those kind of methods method where it's a set of facts it's a set of it's an algorithm for determining whether a score or something of, of someone has a, has a disease doesn't in that that's a fact you um you don't act that's you can't maybe not protect that, but how you express that, how, what questions you ask, how, you know, how does the app look and feel that can be protected by copyright. And that is uh, very inexpensive because initially it's automatic. As soon as you put pen to paper or save your computer file, take a picture, uh, record a video, um, that copyright is attached. And, you know, if you're a person, not a company, that copyright, is very long. It's your life plus seventy years. Um, companies, different terms, but you know, e almost equally as long. And even if you do decide to register it, it's very inexpensive. Um, and registration is really only necessary if you're going to enforce a copyright and um, sue someone in court. Otherwise, you can mark something as copyrighted, and you should mark in all of your work as copyrighted. Um, so those are the four. Uh, basics kinds of intellectual property, different things that they can cover uh, depending on the kind of company you have. Um, and then the next slide, we'll move on to, um, you know, what what should you file on? When should you file it? Um, so if you can move on to the next slide. There we go. So generally, you know, early stage companies, you are you are caught in this this catch twenty two, right? You need to tell everybody about your great technology. You need to publish papers if you're um, an academic, you, right? And, but all things can destroy your ability to pat, to get a patent. So if you have the pressure to uh, disclose things, even under NDA, I, I would highly recommend you file before any kind of discussion or disclosure. Um, you know, reviewers of grants, reviewers of journal articles. Well, supposedly, you know, under uh, they're under confidentiality. Things are leaky. You know, you if you what you've got is important, I would protect it. Um, so 
try to have your your patents or whatever other intellectual property filed ahead of time. Um, you know, if you're if you're well funded, if you can keep things a secret like big pharma does, um, you can push, you can delay your filing until you're much further developed and have a better idea of what your product is and extend your patent life cycle closer to when you're actually selling, which gives you more years of of that monopoly of that higher price being able to sell your product. Um, you know, generally early stage companies don't have that luxury, but if you do, that you know that's something you should also consider. Uh, what should you file on? Definitely want to cover your platform technology. What is that that hook? What is that thing that made you start the company in the first place? Why are you better than what's out there? You know that if you can, you know, however you can define that. Um, if you can protect that, that's ideal. And then any improvements, maybe you're licensing out that platform technology. Um, any, but that platform technology is great proof of concept, but is it uh, mark, you know, is it something you can take to market? Probably you're going to make improvements along the way. Those improvements should be patented. And process developments, you know, as you, you know, once you've got your candidate that you're going to say, this is what I'm going to sell, you know, scaling up, developing that into a product that is both approved and, you know, and marketable, there's going to be process development. So there's going to be um, formulation development, things like that. Um, those should also be protected. So that's kind of, you know, what should you protect? Why should you protect it? Um, you know, very quick, very uh, high level, unfortunately, but, um, you know, I, I highly advise you you get a good intellectual property attorney and discuss your your, your strategy, your plan with them and, and really, you know, take the time to get this worked out. Um, so the next slide goes into kind of university tech transfer. Um, I, I put this in because a lot of early stage companies, um, this, this is, you know, kind of where you're at. You either in the midst of licensing, you're thinking about licensing, you're thinking about spinning out a company. Um, so, um, you know, working with tech, tech transfer offices is gonna be your first big thing, right? Um, so, you know, think about the license agreement itself and think about the technology you're licensing out. Um, you know, what, what kind of, if that's a patent, you know, do your diligence on it, get it looked at, um, and then, you know, your overall IP strategy. So, you know, the details of that will go on to the next slide. So the first, the first slide will be on, on licensing. Um, so some things that I've learned uh, advising small companies when licensing from universities um, are don't just think about you not, but think about the future. Are, you know, think about, you know, who you're, commercial partner is going to be um, think about who your you know your big funding round partners are going to be what kind of terms are they going to expect and what kind of terms would they agree to because if you have to go back to a university and ask for changes in your license there's going to be a cost so if you can the best if the, you know if you can get the best terms possible up front then there's you know the future partners are going to think you're savvy and you know, I'm going to think you did a great job getting your technology and that's going to be a plus. Um, costs, you know, a lot of early stage companies don't have a lot of money. Um, so if you defer costs, if you let the university pay the patent costs, you know, what is that price? Because it's going to cost you later. If um, And, you know, just consider what what the reasonable, what's market rate. Don't, don't give up too much early on. Uh, equity. Equity is often a, a portion of your license with the university. Um, you know, is is there a top up if until you meet a certain uh, amount of money raised? If that's the case, you know, you're going to keep that equity percentage fairly low so that you aren't diluting yourself, just giving um, more and more equity out to the university uh, for if it, if you can help it. If it, you know, if they're not asking for an equity top up as you as you give out more shares, then you know you can consider giving more upfront because it'll get diluted out as you take in money. Uh, big, th big thing that I've seen: uh, realistic milestones, timelines. Um, commercial partners don't like timelines that they have to be held to, because in real life, 
things don't always work and things have to be fixed. Things have to go back and, you know, take longer than, than what uh, a tech transfer licensing agent is going to tell you, you know, it should take you to get to phase two clinical trial. Um, so if you, the more you can resist those, push those, make those loose, have, you know, fudge language in them, the better off you'll be uh, down the road. Uh, the next slide, uh, we're, we can talk about the actual patent that you're licensing out. So I highly recommend you hire your own um, counsel for both negotiating your license and then reviewing the, the intellectual property that you're licensing out. You know, what stage is the patent? Is it a provisional? You know, is it really early? Is it late? Has it already been through a PCT in a national stage? Um, can you still file for international protection? Um, it's beyond 30 months, that, that deadline is passed and you can't. So what countries did the university file in? Is it, you know, is that going to hamper you? How broad is the patent? A lot of universities like to file really broad patents, um, you know, but, and sometimes that's good. Sometimes, you know, your commercial partner will, will say, oh, you know, you can cover this and you can show them a patent application. But sometimes that's bad because they're like, they'll know that you can't actually get those broad claims. And you know, have you analyzed to know what's practically allowable versus what's been filed? Um, and does it even cover the product you want to take to market? You know, a lot of companies. And is it just an early idea? Do you even need it? You know, have you already you know developed something that wouldn't even be covered by your patent? Um, if is that the case, do you need to license? Do you need to license it? Um, or if you do license it and then it doesn't cover your product. You know, are you going to be paying royalties for know-how? Um, you know, if you can avoid those kind of things, all the better. Um, and, you know, I think the next slide, we'll talk about improvements. Um, yeah, so improvements. You know, it, this is kind of is your relationship with the university. If, especially if you're, if you're the, the person who invented it, you're trying to spin out your own technology, or, you know, your partner is, if they're going to, if you're going to keep using the university to do work, to make improvements, you're going to want those improvements to be included in your original license. If you're not, maybe you want to draw a tight line and say, anything after this line, I own all myself. Um, and, you know, has you know, the university, you know, have you considered a freedom to operate analysis? You know, at the university, most tech transfer offices don't, if they say they have, maybe they you know, they had somebody do a little search. Uh, patentability is not the same thing as freedom to operate. Freedom to operate is your ability to sell your product without somebody else's patent blocking you. Um, you can get a patent and, and not have freedom to operate. Um, patentability is is a narrower a narrower scope. Um, so if they've done a patentability search, or they're relying on a um, on a PCT search report. It's, it's not the same thing. And highly recommend that you do your own searching. Um, maybe get an inexpensive um, legal search done. I don't wouldn't recommend a full legal opinion unless you're closer to market, closer to a big, big value inflection point. Um, so, you know, but those are some things to think about. Uh, I believe we've got maybe 15 minutes left um, to open up for some Q&A. Maybe I've touched on something that sparked your interest we can further expound upon. Um, John's got a lot of experience and, we, you know, if you guys don't have questions where we can um, discuss amongst ourselves and things that are interesting.